Thank you for staying with us. And we have a very interesting conversation coming up. You may have been thinking about Ukraine and everything happening there between them and Russia and how Ghana has been impacted directly and indirectly. Well, we're hosting uh, this morning the honorary consul designate to Ukraine, Dr. Albert. I'm going to give you the full name, Dr. Albert Schweitzer Lomo Kitscher. Uh, he is the, the Honorable Consul Designate to Ukraine. Thank you so much, sir, for joining the conversation. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure having you. I, I, I didn't even know you were in town, and here you are today uh, in our midst. But what would you say, for starters, uh, the impact of this entire enterprise, Russia you know, taking on Ukraine, what has it been like for you? You've and, and by the way, let me just mention, he's lived in Ukraine for some, what, 34, 34 years? years? Yes. 34 years. That's right. So you were there even when the USSR was That's still right. in existence. That's right. Yeah. So sometimes I have um, issues with when I present my documents. It's like you studied in USSR, you graduated from Ukraine, one yeah. name of a university, another name you graduated. So in mm. between that, what did you do? Then I have to tell history. What, what took you, even before we get into the current conversation, what took you to the USSR? Well, as you know, um, the USSR was granting scholarships for young, you know, people to be able to study in the universities there, and happened to be one of those who gained those scholarships and went to study. So this is way back. Way back, yeah, in the 80s. Okay, and you studied there, and uh, what happened? You decided to make your life there? Well, as um, when I was there as a student, um, I got very much involved in the community life, mm. and um, I was working with children, you know, doing little games and skis, which I was doing when I was here. So when I completed, I came back, and then I went back to do my PhD, and then at that time, I decided to stay. Mm. Let's talk now about the impact of, like I said, the, the Russo-Ukrainian war. We read about it, we've heard about it, and in terms of Africa, for example, countries like Egypt, uh, who import most of their wheat yeah. from there, in fact, over 50%, some over 80%, the impact has been real. Yeah. Some get their sunflower oil or sunflower from there. But what for you has been the major impact of this entire enterprise, starting from you know, the very commencement of this year, some, sometime around February. February yes, um, it all started on February 24th, and um, life changed, I think, forever. And um, a new page in history was you know, opened. One of the things that this war has done is that it has brought a lot of information to people to know a little more about Ukraine to start with, what Ukraine has, what Ukraine offers to the world, which was not pretty much known. Um, the impact has been devastating on Ukraine itself as a nation mm. because Ukraine was not ready for any military activity. As you know, Ukraine demilitarized and right. in order to you know, bring peace. Right. So you wake up in the morning. I remember the day. On I think it, it, it let go of its nuclear capacity. Yes. It's all yes, on the back of that. Yes. So there was nothing to you know hold on to. But on that day, I was out of town, and um, when I heard on the news that Russia invaded Ukraine, I called my wife and she said, "Oh, there was earthquake." I said, "It's not earthquake. These are bombings." And um, the effect it has had is that not only on Ukraine directly, but on the world, as you can see. Um, many economies are shaking. People don't have much food. Um, you think of sunflower oil and other things that Ukraine provides. They are unable to do it. And uh, it has really brought a change. And I think we have all woken up to understand that in life, you must be ready to be flexible because times change. Uh, on the back of that statement, Sam have also said that it is a crying shame, for example. I mean, we're having a very holistic conversation. It's a crying shame that Africa, looking at our land size and the fact that even Ghana, looking at our arable land and what we're doing with it, would have to rely on Ukraine That's right. and Russia That's right. for grain. You get it. Of course, we know in terms of land size, Ukraine is the second largest on the continent. Russia is the largest, so the two largest on the continent. But the fact that we have all this arable land and we have to rely on them 
for cereals, for grain. What do you make of that? Well, what I would say is that if you have something and you don't know you have it or you don't use it, then you will not get the benefits of it. Mm. I have a phone in my hand. I can choose never to use it. And I'll be complaining about not having you know, communications with people. All I need is to set it up and begin to use it. Mm. Well, I think in the past, we were used to bringing in stuff. And the mentality that most of us have is maybe local is bad, mm. foreign is good. But it has changed quite significantly. But at the same time, you can see those 10 sentiments are there. Many people would not want, for me growing up, I had a different understanding of farming. I wish I am starting my life all over again. I would have done things in the area of, let's say, agriculture and some basic things. But then it was either you are a lawyer, you're a doctor, or whatever. Yeah, that might you know. So we never gave much precedence to developing our lives. And life is about what? Water, food, infrastructure, and community. And I think these are things that is there. But right now with this war, I think we are beginning to see. And I am the first person who would say, if we don't know, let's learn the best practices because we have the opportunity, we have the potential. And you know potential is what you can do, but you have not done yet. So I think we are waking up to do something. Let's talk about the Ukrainians themselves. I mean, there are so many nationals there who, who have been left stranded in different ways. Most of them left the country to neighboring countries, Poland, Austria, and the rest. But how much do they know about Ghana, for example, and, and what the impact has been, as, as has been touted for us? Well, um, they don't really know much about Ghana. But I know one thing for sure, that um, the impact of the war has been very, very devastating. And because of that, they are beginning to find out what are the knockdown effects on other nations. I, for instance, being a champion of promoting Ghana, I have made it clear that this war has also affected us adversely in the fact that what we ever get from you, we are not getting it right now. And other, you know, communications that could be going on, we are unable to do that because of this same war. So it is very, very important um, that at this point, um, they knowing the effect of what is happening there, everybody is praying for this war to end so that life can come back to normal. And I believe that Ukraine will be looking into other directions where they have never looked to because they now know that what is happening there is having a domino effect in other places. Mm. Just how much would you say the effect has been in terms of what is happening in Russia and Ukraine, specifically on Ghana? Well, um, when you take the Ghanaian community in Ukraine, I would say over 90% of Ghanaians are students. So the effect of what has happened is that education has been halted for a number of you know, our students who are our future professionals. Mm. So um, it has that direct effect. There are private businesses that are liaising and working with Ghanaian companies. Throughout this war period, they have not been able to do anything. And that is also not good for business. Mm. The third part is. There are also other like charities and fraternities that are working. And all they have to do now is to try to pull resources to see how they can help displaced people. I have been part of a group that is seeking and looking out for our uh, nationals who are displaced all over the European you know, community. And I'm talking about those who are vulnerable and trying to see ways to help them. So this is what I can say. There is more to it, but I think this is the general overview. Let's talk about students especially. Uh, yes, many Ghanaians, and uh, at, at the time when the war started and there were lots of complaints, uh, some opportunity was given for, for some of them to come into the country in right. batches and, right. and all of that. Uh, are there any still left there? I know some also resisted, did not want to come. Yeah. What's the situation currently? 
Well, um, currently, I would say that at the beginning of the war and when um, <clears throat> the, we, the, the nation heard about the plight of our citizens, they provided ways to get them to Ghana. So anybody at that time who wanted to come to Ghana was, I mean, provisions were made for them to come to Ghana and, you know, be in safety. Mm. Um, of course... I remember back then the, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and the batches. Yes, and yes. And I want to take this opportunity to also really thank our minister who took the Honorable Shele Ayokoboche, who right. took the opportunity to really champion this process. You know, Colin, she personally um, spoke with me and um, really I was happy to know how much they were ready to and eventually planes, I mean, where flights were organized to take people, but they weren't forced to get on the plane. So those mm. who wanted to definitely came to Ghana. Mm. Others decided to stay in Europe. They applied, like you asked me now, is that uh, when the war started, the European community gave uh, protection to people who are fleeing the war. Right. Everybody was giving protection, but primarily for Ukrainians and then permanent residents of Ukraine. Mm. refugees in Ukraine and other specialized people. For our students, they are temporary because they are there for a season. Right. And therefore, the protection did not cover them. Mm. So in the first few months, registration was made for everyone. But to integrate and to remain becomes a problem. Mm. As of now, we are still trying to negotiate and speak with them because some people do not want to come to Ghana for obvious reasons. Others are saying, our friends in Ghana at the time, was telling us they don't see anything happening. So they are hesitant to come. But I would say right now the situation has changed a bit. Mm. And probably we could have an opportunity to, if you like, give uh, those who would want to come back to you know, return. So, so there, would, there likely would be another window for any other returnees, so to speak, to, to make well, their way back well, to Ghana? Well, that, that would be my, my humble request. Mm. Why? Because um, I was very happy to hear that the, most of our students also, I should say, are medical students. You know, Ghana, we like medicine and all that kind of thing. So a lot of them are medical students. And recently, they have been accepted and taken into our universities, which is good news. Therefore, there are others there who did not benefit from that opportunity mm. if they could be given that opportunity to also come, maybe go through the assessment and then absorb into the system, that would be really, really good. And I believe um, it will serve as good for the future. As honorary consul designate, are you going to engage the foreign affairs minister on this? Definitely. Is it, is it something you're going to put on the table? Yes. Yes, this is something I, I, I would put on the table and, and discussions is ongoing in that mm. area. Mm. And I want to also say that I believe there will be favorable responses. Mm. Talking about the people themselves, Ghanaians mm. who may be stranded, others who may still be resisting coming home. You just made mention of the fact that for obvious reasons, some of them wouldn't want to come. Some may be thinking about reintegration. Some may be thinking about the programs they were studying. Some may not be students, but yeah. may be thinking about their businesses and what they may have lost there. Right. Others may be thinking about the economy as it is or as they hear it yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you get the feeling at least some more would want to return. Oh, yes. I believe if uh, the opportunity is given, we would have some who would want to come back. Um, I spoke with somebody in particular, and his situation is specific because, for instance, in Ghana, depending on when I was a student, you know, in the 70s and 80s, um, if you studied science, you could go do medicine, and it still remains the same. In Ukraine, they accepted students who did not necessarily have the science background, but they would have taken an exam or assessment, and then absorb into the medical um, school. Right. So what they could never ever do in Ghana, they are able to do it. And this particular student was telling me, you know, my background, Ghana would not accept it. Mm. But I'm top of my class and have studied for three years. He's in the third year when this 
war happened. So in Ukraine, yes, he was top of his class. Yes, he was. But in Ghana, because of his background, he wouldn't be allowed. He wouldn't. To pursue he would never medicine. have been a doctor. Mm. You know, and sometimes people wake up late. I am an example of such people. I'm playful. I like to do stuff with my hands. So I take life easily. Then one day I woke up and I sat down, and the difference was clear. You know, so given the opportunity. Um, people can achieve much. But the arguments also like of the MDC, I can understand. Mm. So this person says, I don't really you know, want, want, want to come just because of that. But that would be a discussion. I would like to know what happens to people in that kind of country. Mm. Is it a conversation you feel we should start having? I mean, what I read, law, yeah. I mean, as, as a postgraduate yeah. program, there are some people who would read i know engineers who have become lawyers i know accountants who have become lawyers i know people from different fields who have veered into law should medicine be like that i mean because they would also tell you that technically you don't have the fundamentals yeah. you you may have read integrated science yeah. but you may not have the core fundamentals when it comes to the biologies yeah. and the physics and the chemistries yeah. and the you know elective mathematics and sure. all of that you, you may lack a firm b base in these and and they, these may hamper your progress sure. in, in in that program is it high time we we took a second look at that yeah i think uh, we can take a second look and actually look at what would work for us in our situation Mm. Um, there is a need for, let's say, maybe a scientific research to be done. Um, take a series of um, tests and have people like a project, three, four, five years, and let's see the outcome and then find out how we can do it. Now, giving myself as an example, studying in Ghana, I was an art student. I wasn't a science student, but I did also fine arts. Mm. So when I went to university, we were studying chemistry. Right. All I did was called general science, a little bit of that, everything. That is in here in Ghana? No, or in, there in Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah, right. Then it was in the Soviet Union. So I was like, hey, come, it's chemistry for me, where, what are you talking about? I can draw the H2 plus whatever, but that's where I finish. Right. So they realized when it comes to painting, when it comes to sculpturing, when it comes to those things, I can do it. But then I didn't understand the chemistry. They took time and walk me through. Because what I was becoming, I should understand the component of a color. Mm. I should know what happens when I put my you know, oil paint on right. a canvas. Right. I should know after 20 years, if it's kept in certain conditions, what, what would happen? happen? Mm. I should know how to test a painting to be sure that it's original or not. Mm. Then I started appreciating. But the way they taught me, I would not know all of chemistry, but I know enough chemistry to make me the professional that I am. So mm. I believe, given the opportunity, I used to fear the thing called science. Do you want me to tell you something? Tell me. I teach children this thing called chemistry. You teach chemistry now. So your phobia so, so has it, become something that you Yeah, now... given the opportunity, it was like a play, joke, or that, you know, because it looks like we put all our good students, for instance, into medicine and into engineering, and people who are not good into other things. Mm. So what are we trying to get? We might not get top notch in every place. So I think we need to give a second look mm. at this. That's, that's an interesting take um, that, that he brings to bear. In other words, we, we shouldn't just make it. I, I remember you know, reading this analogy and it was an image basically. If you expect the fish to climb a tree, yeah. uh, you know that will never happen because okay. it's forte is swimming. Mm -hmm. But if you expect the, the monkey to climb a tree, yeah. then you're in the right place. That's but then you must also find ways of enabling yeah. others within the system. Maybe yeah. that's something that our educational setup would have to uh, look at. But let's focus on that. But, but, that but let me say something. Out. You just said something interesting. Mm -hmm. Normally, fishes will not fly. They wouldn't. And Though birds, there are a few flying yeah, fish. Yeah, so but I speak. mean, I mean <laughs> birds will not necessarily, if you are going to a swimming course, mm. and you find a bird as the trainer, mm. you wouldn't want to, to go there. Mm. Fishes are not taught to swim. They are created and made to swim. Mm. Monkeys are not taught in a school to climb. But people... It's innate. Yes, other creatures can be taught, nurtured, and they will behave like monkeys. Mm. 
So we don't have to cancel everybody out. Some are taught. Where I studied, there are naturally gifted people who could look at your face. I should be able to shake your hands, mm. right? And tell your height or something because right. the body is proportionate to something, mm. right? Mm. Now, another person would have to draw some lines before he puts your portrait there because he is a mechanical artist. He uses mathematics to draw and others use their imagination. Mm. So why don't we give everybody the opportunity to shine? Give everybody a chance. Let's talk about the medical students. Um, you started off on that, that, that conversation. Recently, we heard from the Medical and Dental Council saying that a lot of those who are training in Ukraine shouldn't even be training in terms of their background, some coming from carpentry and all of that, yeah. and that this training is not going to be recognized, yeah. uh, that, that there are a lot of potholes, yeah. so to speak, yeah. in it. How, 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 how does that strike you? Well, uh, for me, if I'm looking at it solely from the perspective of um, Ghana, the Ghana requirement will not accept any of those. But I remember a few years back, uh, we had a delegation from the Medical and Dental Council visit Ukraine. I was with them. We visited several universities. They took an assessment of our students and what is happening. And obviously, they made decision to make sure that from that time on, people who are going to study there would fulfill certain requirements. So in my case, if somebody have gone there without the prerequisite you know, uh, qualifications from Ghana, before they came, those should be given the opportunity to go on. But once they made a statement that going forward, and of course, they visited schools, they assessed their laboratories and everything that they have, and gave some accreditation there are some universities that are not accredited to the Medical and Dental Council or whichever organization right. you know, does that. Mm -hmm. So definitely they have an argument. I don't believe you can train a medical doctor fully online. Because right. medicine so because is Because that is practical. one of the issues. Yes, you know, medicine is practical, up. yes. And there is another issue that most of our students are studying in English. In Ukraine, the primary language is Ukrainian, then Russian. If you go to the hospital, a patient will not speak English with you if he does not understand English. And if the student does not understand Russian, you can't hire an interpreter <laughs> to go and interpret for you. So that is some lapse over there. Mm. So we were in the process of thinking of how do we get our people who are studying there, hopefully maybe in the fifth year or the sixth year, they all come to Ghana and you know, just complete it here or whatever. But those things were all in the pipeline until this uh, war started. Which brings me to another question. Two questions, in fact. It's been said that there, the, their grading system goes up to even G and H and yeah. the rest. So, mm -hmm. of course, some people who may not qualify from here, who, who even got D's and E's, were seen to be okay, yeah. Yeah. were admitted there because they felt, well, we have G and H, and here it ends at yeah. F. Yeah not knowing, you know, yeah. uh, F is a final fail grade or mm. D and E are not necessarily mm. pass grades, so mm. to speak. So that is one end of the question. The other end is, if we have so many of our students going to Ukraine, yeah. China, uh, some train in Cuba officially, yeah. but Ukraine, China and the rest, and now it's becoming a problem, does that point to that esoteric nature of our, our um, medical studies? We've made it a very small group when in fact we need so many more yeah. doctors. How, how, how do you, yeah, what's your it, thinking it, on that? It really comes up to that, but I will once again say that since the visit of the Medical and Dental Council to Ukraine, the Ukrainian authorities got to know our grading system and therefore they are aware. And also when you see a transcript of a student who have completed than the WASI, mm. they write the grade and they write its corresponding even whether it's the a equivalent. failure or yeah, right. so uh, I don't see where the problem. I also I also thought of same when that you know point was made, but I don't know why. But but on the other hand, their point is also valid and, and, and from some the standpoint I, I, that I, I, if, I, sorry. if yeah. the person has got a D or E yeah. and is still being accepted, you should know that this is not 
the best quality student, maybe not the best quality student, I should rephrase that, yeah. maybe the grade the person got right. at that point in time is not of the best quality that he would require for medical school. Yeah, yeah, and you know, every country and what, like I said, in Ukraine, you can do your primary, secondary, whatever, and when it's time to go to university, you can decide, I want to study this. And you will be taken into the university and you will begin to study. If you don't have any background, they will take you. So you will find somebody studying medicine. Instead of six years, he will do like eight or nine years. Because when mm. he decided to study medicine, he didn't have the basics. And it is absolutely important. My advice to all the students, they will tell you, I tell them, if you know you did not have the background, study on your own. Even I advise some students, and they took it. Whilst they were there, now not fearing those subjects, they took the wasi. They passed. So they have that in their, what do you call it, documents. Mm -hmm. Now I can prove to you that I can study the medicine. So it is not correct any impression that is created that mm -hmm. maybe those studying in Ukraine just go through a wishy-washy system and, right. yeah. and that these are doctors who would come and kill people. That, that is not the right thing. No, I, 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 don't, I don't really accept that. You know, and unfortunately, there is a kind of prejudiced um, approach to people who studied in the East and all that. And I want to really say that it's not everybody who studied there who is a waste material. I have studied with people from different countries, and I mean, America and all that. We sat in class and we beat them. Mm. You know, not because um, when I was in school, I wasn't an excellent, excellent student. But I go through every exam, and I believe that it's a mindset. Oh, these are Eastern train. Oh, these are the people coming from Russia. Or oh, as for that place, and sometimes I hear certain things, and I ask whether those people making those statements really are educated or they understand life. Mm. Or oh, as for that place, everybody, you can even use bus ticket to enter university. Come on, don't stop saying those things. Mm. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not about... Um, defending the studies. I'm trained in the East, and I know in this country, doctors who were trained over there, who came back, and they have made significant impact mm. in the society. Yes, you can say maybe it's not every one of them, but we have some. So let's see where we are not encouraging our people and encourage them. They can do better. But, but we know uh, some, some of the students have been accepted. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, which we are really thankful for. In fact, almost all of them, over almost 200, yeah. Have been that is accepted. the medical students. The medical students, yes, sir. Okay. But I don't know what is happening to other fields of study, engineering, mm. you know, agriculture, mm. nursing, and all this. Because it's not know. limited to yeah. that. There are students studying so many different things That's in Ukraine. Right. Yes. Mm. yes. I have friends who have studied in the Czech Republic and all of mm -hmm. those places yeah. uh, before. Uh, moving the conversation forward, so what, what can we expect from uh, Ukraine in terms of Ghanaian-Ukrainian relations, especially as you are the consul mm -hmm. designate? I have another question for you finally, but yeah. what, what can we expect when you are confirmed? What is the agenda? What are you hoping to achieve for Ghana as honorary uh, consul to well, um, that country, when you are confirmed. Yeah, you know, when I am, where I stand, yeah. I'm like a bridge. Yeah. And um, if a bridge is strong, you can, you know, move over it. Yeah. And I believe that um, that connection with um, Ghana would be stronger. It is already there, but it's not officialized. Yeah. And it is going to bring more opportunities. For instance, we're talking about um, the plight of students. There are so many things we could do, not only sitting in Ukraine, but working right here in connection with what is happening over there. Trade relationship, diplomatic you know, relations, and um, all kinds of um, areas. Mm. So I believe that um, I would bring on board what would really make our nation known in, those, in that country. They are known, but not on the official front. And I would like to also say that I believe that um, soon um, Ukraine will, 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 will really strengthen its um, relationship with us and um, we can have a better opportunity 
to have a discourse. At this point, they are at war, but you can see that even some of the students, they said they are studying online. So people ask me, is this really true that there is war going on? And I say, yes, but some places are quite peaceful now. So we're looking forward to strengthening and making known the relationship in practical, very, very practical terms. All right. To wrap the conversation, I want to talk about the war, the ongoing war, which the Russians insist on referring to as a special yes. operation. You speak Russian yes. from yes. the USSR yeah. you know, yeah. background. Yes. You also speak Ukrainian. That's right. When Ukraine gained its own you know, independence and all of that. Uh, Russia has conducted some referenda, mm -hmm. which uh, the West calls a sham. Mm -hmm. The rest of Europe calls a sham, basically, to integrate, sort of digest parts of Ukraine that are under their control, which the Ukrainians are still battling for. Of course, mm -hmm. that poses the very thorny international situation of uh, now it would appear from the referenda that mm -hmm. this is Russian territory and if Ukraine attacks, mm -hmm. it would be attacking Russia. Yeah. Uh, but others have said this is just a sham. There's also the situation of um, the use of small, smart nuclear weapons, the threat of that. What do you make of all of this in another, apart from Ghana, another place that you can very much call home? Mm -hmm. what, what is your take on all of this? Is, is Russia right even in, in, in this entire enterprise? What do you make of it? Well, um, as you know, before this war, Russia sits at the table with others. Let's talk about United Nations. Mm. And there are rules of operation. Right now, what is going on it looks like they're not playing by the rules mm. and doing what they would want to do. Uh, I'm not the best person to say whether they are right, right or wrong, but I would say that when we have an agreement to do something, if you change your mind, you let me know. Mm. Then we visit the document and see where we can make amendments. There is always place for either making it better or even terminating things. Mm. So the way it's going now, it looks like Russia is on its own doing what he wants. I mean, we've seen yes. the, the, the foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, yes. go to the UN, and every time people walk out, or That's right. the last time he yeah. was at the General Assembly, Assembly meeting, he uh, waited till everyone had delivered, just when it was time for him to come and deliver his speech. He came and did that and, and moved off. And yeah. So, so with mm. that, you can see the dynamics are playing out. Mm. I, I am really um, praying that peace prevails mm. in the midst of everything. Personally, this war has had a great effect on me. Mm. Um, I've had to move from my home that I'm used to. You were showing me pictures that, of your home yeah, that has been yeah, hit? Everything, yeah. So, everything destroyed. So, you know, it's like, um, what do you do? So it's, it's, really, it's really something that has to uh, be ratified. But right now, the rules are not in play. So it is very difficult for me to um, see. And I've not had any inside maybe thoughts I also see from the periphery. So my judgment may be not totally right. But I wouldn't say that Russia is doing you know, the right thing. Mm. Well, Dr. Kitcher, final words as we wrap the conversation? Well, my final words is that in life, situations change, and we must be flexible and adapt to changes, and always look for what is better than what, where we are, because where we are is not everywhere we have to be. I have a saying that journeying is good, but arrival is better. And if you are journeying without a destination, anywhere you get to might be your point of arrival. Therefore, let's look forward. And as a country, I know things happening around in the world and living with this Ukrainian war has had its toll on us. Let us look beyond today and begin to find out the nuggets we need in order to be perfect. Ghana is a country in the world that is going places. And I know we can rise above whatever turbulence. Let's adjust our sails and keep afloat. Let's adjust our sails and stay afloat. The words of Dr. Albert Schweitzer, Lomo Ketcher. He is a 
Ghana's honorary consul designate yeah. to uh, Ukraine. He joined the conversation. Once more, thank you for coming. And, and thank we wish you, you the very best. Uh, we hope you get the nod and that with all your years of uh, experience and the expertise, you'll bring that to bear uh, in terms of Ghana-Ukraine relations. Thank you so much. And I really want to thank your station also because you chased me during the war. Mm. I refused to talk, but I'm happy I'm in this studio. Mm. And thank you so much. We're grateful you came. It's some 53 minutes off the top of the hour. We'll be right back to wrap uh, the entire uh, show, maybe take some messages as well. Do stay with us. We'll be back on The AM Show.